welcome to the lesson of the week with yours truly, Sean Thunder Wallace. I'm a performer, composer, and professor of music at The Ohio State University. This weekly program is designed to inspire and inform the serious music student. We're all students here, so join me on the path of discovery as we learn together. And then the other thing we were talking about last week was we were going to start doing like getting some more uh, um, double kind of stuff. Like, how yeah. should I start with like doing that? Yeah. Well, um, one thing that you have to do to get double time, you could. Well, one one thing you, that you can do. Uh, well, I mean, I play a lot of double time stuff, right? Yeah. So that's one source. Is to listen to lessons, find double time stuff that I'm playing, and just transcribe, and then start taking stuff and learn it in every key. Find two five ones and turnarounds that I play. Um, uh, maybe stuff I play on dominant. Maybe different patterns that I'm playing. You know, a um, couple different ways to extend your lines because when you're playing double time, uh, you know it's like if I'm thinking. Uh, if I want to play double time, if I don't want to just play like scales two octaves or something, or uh, you know arpeggios twice, you know, well I was going to play, and I'm going to play, you know, that's going to get boring. Yeah. There's just no information there, no new information. But a way to to extend your lines, just a couple of great ways to extend them. One of them is what we we're just talking about is false fingering. That's a great way to extend your lines. But there's another one that's much more common, and that is chromaticism. Uh, adding chromatic notes in the line and or enclosure. chromaticism and uh, the enclosure enclosure is a way to seemingly say more than you're actually saying because there's not actually there's not really more information there it's just you're extending the information that you already know okay so the combination of transcribing guys that play more double time stuff um, really getting the chromaticism stuff happening so either by adding chromatic notes in the line, right. or by you know, or by doing things like enclosure, and and then number three is uh, false fingering, false fingering stuff. You know, if I'm play, if I'm playing. <laughs> fingering what it sounded like you know or something like that yeah. <laughs> but because I did it so I so by adding that stuff in there all of a sudden now you got more more material more information but, uh, more information it's not really more information it's kind of more information but it's kind of like applying, uh, it's like applying a, a, a value to X yeah. in each case. That makes it seem like it's bigger. But then it's like when you divide by, by X, you find out that, oh, <laughs> it's just like a couple notes there. It's no big deal. I can figure out what that is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And then, like, when I was, when I was trying to learn double time lines, how is it? Because it's like a lot more notes and it's a lot longer, and then like mm -hmm. moving up half steps and stuff. How I'm, I should still be like hearing it, but 
Mm-hmm. Is there any way to like make it not necessarily easier, but like different ways to think about it so you can <laughs> keep track of like where you are? Because like that's it's just, well, it's the same thing as with with yeah. There's no trick to it. Uh, it's the same thing as with you know taking any two five or or any scale for that matter and learning it in every key. Yeah. Uh, f- uh, yeah, it's, it's the same difference. Like say if I'm if I'm learning a double time thing and it's giving me trouble, then maybe it just means that it's going to take two or three times longer for me to get it. You know, all right. Well, it's just a, it's just a time commitment. Okay, and uh, so that's that's one. The other thing is just the same as with a with a regular two five one. What are some of the things that you do to to take a, a short two five one or something that doesn't have as many notes in it? You might figure out, okay, this starts on the third of the chord. You know, it goes up. It's our, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of an arpeggiation of the chord, and then it starts and it's playing more linear here. It ends on the seventh of that next note, and then resolves to this note. Yeah, I mean, if if uh, I try not to think about it as much, but some stuff that you try to play, uh, you know, like the first time you try to go through and like learn giant stuff substitutions, like in every key. I mean, you're, you're probably going to have to try to figure out. You know what it is that's happening, or it's like the first time I try to take certain kinds of patterns, like diminished patterns or something. I might have to sit there and figure something out because it's not in my ear. So, to the extent that something is in your ear, you can play it. But to the extent that it's not in your ear, you might have to find some theoretical ways to get at it. But the goal is still the same. Yeah. The goal is still the same, and that is to get it in your playing. Right, yeah. and, and but the way to get it in your playing so that it doesn't sound contrived and it sounds organic is to get it in your ear, and then you're still the goal is still to play what's in your ear. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't play anything that's not in my ear. You know, that's just I, that's just what it is. So, and when I have tried to deal with that. I don't like what it sounds like because it, it just starts sounding too mechanical and too like contrived and stuff. I don't like it. So I practice a lot of different stuff, and I have you guys working on a lot of different stuff. Uh, but the goal should be is to get it in your ear, because then once you get it in your ear, then then you're the master. You can manipulate it in any way that you desire. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, man. Sounds good. Keep working.